All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for uh, joining the webinar. And uh, we are going to talk today uh, about uh, some successes and uh, shortcomings of uh, the generative artificial intelligence. And uh, Sam, you can start moving to the slides. Uh, so we are living to the time of the real uh, revolution in uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, about a year ago, uh, GPT-3 was introduced and it started uh, providing the first really valuable uh, results. Uh, during uh, the last year, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence uh, was evolving very quickly. And the main trends, including uh, uh, making the uh, models themselves better uh, and making everything faster, uh, the real uh, changes came uh, when uh, the generative AI became multimodal. So it can uh, get on the input and on the output, not only natural language text where it started, but also images, uh, voice, uh, video, and uh, so on. And uh, the second trend was the integration of generative AI with other uh, applications. And uh, this process is going on. Uh, there are numerous developers that are creating applications using generative AI. Most of these applications are currently focused on uh, using uh, generative AI as the interface uh, to um, running in concert uh, multiple uh, other applications. And uh, people are saying that uh, English is becoming the new uh, programming language. Uh, so uh, during the uh, last uh, December uh, Open AI, uh, meeting for developers. There were some applications demonstrated when people are using natural language input uh, that gets integrated uh, with search engines. Uh, so the system is providing the relevant results. And uh, then uh, in response to simple queries, it can even map on the uh, JS uh, map places of interest in the destination of the travel the person is interested in. So uh, generative AI is becoming a great personal assistant and uh, this trend will continue. Now, uh, going to the next slide, uh, we uh, will be focusing today on only uh, text analysis portion uh, of uh, this uh, technology. Uh, natural language text is the most advanced media. It's not uh, an accident uh, that generative AI started uh, in uh, this particular field. And we'll be focusing on uh, natural language processing tasks that can include entity and fact extraction, sentiment analysis, emerging trend detection, document classification, and uh, many more. So going to the next slide. So. Uh, while being great uh, for uh, personal use and uh, finding many useful applications, at the same time, uh, generative AI based on large language models uh, is, uh, much, is uh, not finding its way to the corporate world as much as it should for different mission critical tasks. And uh, the reason corporations and large organizations are focused uh, about the use of the system are the uh, childhood illnesses of uh, the uh, this technology the uh, most uh, uh, the, the most known one is the problem of hallucinations so uh, generative ai was built uh, primarily for chat and it is trying to be nice and when running the analysis of different documents for example uh, for uh, performing open source uh, intelligence competitive intelligence it can invent uh, things uh, 
uh, that uh, do not exist uh, in the real data. And uh, when you have to uh, deal with uh, some really important tasks, uh, for example, uh, identifying potential adverse events in patient records, uh, you uh, really have to uh, have no hallucinations at all, if possible. So uh, the system is not uh, ready for uh, production use so far, so it can be used as a robot without uh, really much interaction with the human. Uh, then the system generates outputs that are still unstructured, and that's just the nature of the beast. Uh, so uh, to interpret uh, these outputs, uh, it is necessary to uh, parse them and structurize. So some effort is needed. Uh, the system also uh, produces uh, outputs that are difficult to verify when dealing with textual data. If you extract certain entities or facts, uh, you need to verify if you have a human in the loop, you still need to verify the accuracy. Uh, if you do not have any highlighting in the text, and that's uh, currently an issue uh, with generative AI, uh, then it becomes difficult because you have to analyze really large amounts of data. Uh, corporations are also very cautious about sending their uh, corporate data out. And uh, currently, uh, large companies require, uh, large companies uh, providing the models require that you send uh, the data out to them for the analysis. And uh, there are ways around this. Uh, there is a new uh, field of open source generative AI models that can be used inside uh, your corporation. You will need to uh, have the necessary equipment for that, uh, like GPU collections of GPU cards, clusters. Uh, but uh, this way you can uh, preserve the privacy of the data. And uh, it is still um, pretty expensive and time consuming to run different analysis on large amounts of data. And uh, corporations, unlike individuals, need to process uh, really large uh, volumes at once. And um, uh, this is also a consideration for companies. And uh, then uh, generative AI has low consistency between different runs. So you can run the same analysis with the same input twice and get different results. And you do not really know which one to trust. Uh, so going to the next slide, we're going to talk uh, about uh, the possible solutions to uh, these shortcomings. And uh, here we again will be discussing synergies. So to remedy some of these uh, issues, uh, one thing that uh, we think will be of real importance is integration with uh, a universal platform for data analysis and manipulation. So uh, we can uh, let generative AI uh, run sequentially on the data. Uh, we can let it uh, get access to data from multiple silos across our corporation. Uh, we can have generative AI check its own results to different uh, queries and uh, we can uh, let it uh, cooperate with other existing technologies for natural language processing. And having this universal platform, a no-code platform, we also can democratize the process and uh, have uh, not necessarily programmers, uh, but just data scientists creating their own applications that will be successful uh, with the use of generative AI. Uh, in this case, generative AI just becomes an engine uh, in complex uh, multi-step data analysis scenarios. So uh, real uh, complex uh, analysis can be performed. And the second key will be cross-pollination with uh, other well-established NLP techniques, such as linguistic rules, ontologies, and uh, others. So let's move on to, to the next slide. And uh, from here, uh, we are going to, I'm going to turn 
the microphone to my colleague, uh, Sam Mankoma, uh, who is a data scientist uh, with Megatera Intelligence, uh, and uh, he's working on different projects that involve uh, generative AI and other tools um, that we have in our possession. So he will be discussing uh, the benefits of a uh, hybrid AI approach. So Sam, uh, your turn. Yes, uh, my name is Sam. I'll be giving the presentation. I've been doing a lot of work with um, integrating uh, generative AI uh, with um, other um, technologies that um, are older but more reliable in order to get uh, better results than uh, you can get from either alone. Uh, so in this uh, PowerPoint, I'm going to demonstrate uh, one of those techniques for you. Um, so no, I don't want to spend too much time on this because we, we already did um, go over the, the history of AI a little bit with Sergey. Um, but uh, if we want to briefly recap the, the timeline of natural language processing uh, to find out um, uh, how we got here and, and what bundle of tools are, are at our disposal because it's more than just generative AI. Uh, the, the first use of natural language processing uh, occurred in 1954 uh, when a, a group of researchers uh, translated 50 sentences from Russian into English using a, a rules-based approach. Um, the rules-based approach was not viable um, except in academic laboratories and it uh, slowly uh, emerged um, remaining in, in academia over the next few decades, uh, but didn't become commercially viable until the mid-1990s. Uh, around that time, uh, a number of, of companies um, sprung up, including Megaputer Intelligence, which uh, began to deliver uh, natural language processing services to um, uh, other corporations, uh, all exclusively using the rules-based approach. Uh, Mid-2000s, we began to see uh, machine learning uh, emerge in the, the natural language uh, processing field. Um, these included simple algorithms like Naive Bayes and SVM. Uh, which were, were used for tasks such as uh, spam detection and uh, natural language process and, um, and record classification. Uh, 2018 was a, a big year for AI because that was when uh, Google released uh, BERT, uh, the first uh, Transformers-based language model, um, which is uh, the same architecture that uh, would later give rise to ChatGPT in 2023, uh, bringing us into the, the present era of um, what many people consider to be real AI uh, for the first time. Um, the, the future, um, in our opinion, is going to involve uh, the integration of this um, generative AI um, with other techniques um, to produce synergies. Um, let's talk more about what we mean. So if you've ever used uh, ChatGPT, you probably know that it, um, it has the ability to integrate with other tools. Uh, for example, it, it can use a search engine. Um, uh, only, only Bing, unfortunately, uh, right now. Um, in the future, maybe it will be able to use better search engines. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, it can also use uh, techniques like uh, retrieval augmented generation, where it um, actually retrieves uh, documents from a, a structured database. Um, it's beginning to, to become more networked with the, the tools around it, um, which, which allow to, to fill in the gaps and uh, patch up its weaknesses. And so in, in this uh, presentation, we're going to demonstrate a novel technique which integrates uh, the generative AI with the rules-based approach for natural language processing uh, to produce a, a result that is better than either alone. Um, in, in order to demonstrate this, we're going to um, perform a fact extraction, um, sort of a toy example, on uh, 10,000 news articles. And uh, to keep things simple, um, our objective is to extract um, CEOs and their companies uh, as pairs. So um, before we get to the hybrid approach, um, let's keep things simple and um, answer the question of why not um, just use a language model alone? Um, so we're showing a simple pipeline um, in PolyAnalyst, which is our underlying no-code platform for text analytics. Um, basically, you just um, uh, run the generative AI um, with a prompt and that says extract the CEOs um, from these news articles and uh, see what kind of results you get. 
uh, here's the prompt that we used. Um, it says you're a fact extractor, read the article to extract CEOs and their companies, and it uh, supplies an example of um, this done properly. Um, that's called uh, uh, one-shot prompting. Um, it improves the performance of the, the language model. And here are the results that we got. Uh, the, the CEO, uh, the, the language model, um, that is GPT-3 in this case, uh, extracted 930 results, uh, but only 447 of them were, were correct. Uh, the precision was very low, uh, 47%, which is an, an F, um, just not um, production quality. And so it, it, it didn't really achieve the results that we wanted it to achieve. Um, uh, what went wrong? Uh, why? Is, so the, the first thing that went wrong was um, rampant hallucinations. As we saw, um, about half of the results that it generated um, were hallucinations. Um, uh, this is a result of um, the, the garbage in, uh, garbage out. Um, uh, uh, well, it's, it's this principle, I suppose. Um, when you feed the uh, language model irrelevant context, uh, such as an entire news article, uh, when it only cares about um, perhaps one sentence in that news article, uh, that is going to reduce the, the quality of your result. Um, if you feed it a news article that has um, uh, no mention of the fact that you're trying to extract, uh, that, that's just an opportunity to hallucinate. Um, and we want to keep that to a minimum. So uh, the irrelevant context is um, one of the factors causing these hallucinations. Um, another issue that we had um, in trying to perform the analysis was the high query cost. Um, uh, most of the text that we're processing wasn't relevant. Uh, if you want to run uh, a powerful AI, say GPT-4, on 10,000 news articles, it's going to cost you about $60. Um, these language models have context windows. Uh, for those of you who don't know, a context window is the maximum um, length of text that it can process before it, it just rejects the query. Um, it sends you an error and says, um, I can't um, read this much. And the, the fourth issue we had was a lack of explainability of the results. Um, we provide it with an article and say extract the CEOs and it claims to have extracted a CEO. But how do we know if, if this um, CEO is correct or if it's a hallucination? Um, it's not easy to tell. Um, so here are some examples of hallucinations uh, made by the, the language model. As you can see, it thinks that um, uh, Elise uh, Holosek is the CEO of Microsoft. That's not correct. It also thinks that Brad Smith is the CEO of Microsoft. That's not correct. Uh, the, the lack of explainability makes it difficult to verify um, the, the results and recognize when a hallucination has occurred um, because all you do have is uh, a whole news article and who wants to read uh, an entire news article to try to tell if um, uh, the um, extracted fact is actually present or, or not. Um, uh, from a, a human perspective, it's, it's just not feasible. Um, so uh, the, the result was uh, a disaster. It's much like uh, the car that you see in this picture. The, it, it did in fact um, do what it was supposed to do, but the result was not um, of the quality that we wanted. Uh, so uh, what's the remedy? Um, uh, the remedy is, is rules. Uh, rules are um, the industry standard for, for fact extraction. Um, even though they're they're um, uh, not new, uh, they've we still use them because they're they're reliable. Um, they have a lot of benefits that uh, natural that the the newer generative approach does not have. Uh, they're extremely fast. Uh, there's no cost to scale. Um, you don't pay per query. Uh, they don't hallucinate. Um, no limitation on the size of the context window. And uh, the extractions uh, automatically provide highlighting of the results, uh, which makes it very easy to um, jump to the right part of the article and verify um, if the extraction is correct or incorrect. Uh, but uh, some drawbacks uh, compared to the generative approach. Um, there's more complex upfront setup. 
and uh, they can often have lower recall than generative AI um, when they're used alone. So this is, is what the upfront setup uh, looks like um, for a rule-based uh, extraction. It's, uh, it's, it's rather complex. I, I believe this rule has about uh, 35 lines uh, in total. Um, it, it extracts uh, CEO company pairs. It's not uncommon for uh, an extraction like this to, to have up to 100 lines. And uh, this, this language is not um, overly complex. Um, it's not a, a full programming language like, say, Python. Um, and a person can get a handle on this in, in a few weeks um, or, or up to a month. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, um, it, it does take um, uh, a person with some training to, to, to perform this kind of extraction. It's, it's harder than prompting. Uh, so here's an example of uh, an extraction which um, can be missed by the rules-based approach. Um, uh, the, uh, the rule was not able to tell that um, Larry Fink was the CEO of BlackRock, probably due to the, um, uh, the large separation between uh, the two parts of the entity that we were trying to extract. All right, um, so um, as we've seen, um, the, the generative approach is very promising and the, the rules-based approach um, is very stable. Uh, can we find a, a synergy that gives us the best of both worlds? Uh, generally, uh, with um, each new um, AI technology uh, that comes out on the market, uh, we, we find that um, over time it becomes integrated with rules. Uh, there, there are very pragmatic reasons for this. Um, the, the AI and, and rules are are, are opposites and they complement each other. So it's not surprising that in the case of generative AI, um, it, it, it can be integrated uh, with um, the, the rules-based approach uh, in, in this use case. So here's um, the thousand yard um, overview um, of the method that you came to see. Uh, it's uh, essentially a three-step process. Uh, the first step is rules-based context, context filtering. Uh, we use a simple rule to extract paragraphs which mention the fact that we, we care about, um, in this case, um, um, CEOs. And then we feed these small but relevant context um, fragments uh, to the AI. Um, this solves the garbage in, garbage out problem. As we mentioned earlier, um, every time you, you show the, the AI uh, an irrelevant context, um, it it, has, it increases the tendency to hallucinate. And uh, so by filtering out the irrelevant context using a rule, um, we get better results. And it also has the added bonus of decreasing query costs because you're processing less text. Second step is the, the AI-driven analysis. It operates um, just as um, you saw previously in the, the pure AI approach um, using a natural language prompt. And the Third step is rules-based verification. The idea here is to use a, a simple rule to verify that the extracted entity is actually present in the underlying text. Um, this serves, um, this allows, it, it stops the, the model from uh, being able to have arbitrary hallucinations. Uh, if you feed it a, a text that um, has no mention of a CEO, it can't tell you that Brad Smith is the CEO of, of Microsoft. Uh, it, additionally, um, because we, we use a rule to match the underlying entity, uh, we're able to add highlighting to the text, um, which solves the explainability problem and uh, adds that um, easy verification that we mentioned earlier. So uh, let's go into more detail. So this is what rules-based context filtering looks like. Um, on the right, you see a, a very simple rule. Um, you may not be familiar with our um, XPDL language, but you can probably read this rule. Uh, it says uh, paragraph CEO or chief executive officer match equals range. Um, all that means is that um, when the word CEO or chief executive officer occurs in a paragraph, we um, extract the whole paragraph um, to be used as um, relevant context. Uh, we have a little GIF on the, the left to demonstrate how that works.
the, the second step is uh, rules-based verification. Um, this is the, the other half of the method. Um, again, we, we write a, sing, a simple rule, um, only a, a single line, uh, which checks to see if the extracted entity is actually present in the text. Um, this rule is maybe not quite as easy to read as the last one, but um, all it does is it, it looks up um, the value of the extracted CEO, it looks up the value of the extracted company, and it looks up the value, and it, it also looks for the word CEO or chief executive officer. And um, when all three are present in the text, it gets a hit, it adds highlighting, and it says um, uh, this, this, this is not a, a hallucination. Um, now, our language, it, it automatically um, takes some, some liberties uh, to, to simplify things for you. Uh, you'll notice that the extracted company was Twitter. Um, it's able to recognize all forms of that word um, in the underlying text, um, even if it's not um, identical um, to the, um, the, the string that is in the company name. Um, and the, the value of this here um, is that um, the, the scope of the error is, is reduced from uh, the entire universe of everything that can go wrong um, only to um, those words that occur in the underlying anchor text. So the benefits of the hybrid approach. Um, well, let's just uh, skip to the results. Um, we ran a head-to-head -head, um, between these three competing approaches, um, pure generative AI, um, uh, the rules-based approach, and uh, the hybrid approach. And we found that the hybrid approach supplied um, the highest precision um, by far. In this case, it was a 97% precision. Um, as an additional benefit, um, we substantially reduced the um, amount of text that needed to be processed, um, saving on um, queries to, to the GPT model. Um, if you had used GPT-4 to process a million news articles, that would have cost you $30,000. But uh, using our hybrid approach, um, you could have performed the same analysis for only about 200. Uh, so here are some examples of uh, uh, fragments that were successfully matched um, by our hybrid method that um, could not easily be matched by rules. Um, in, in this case, um, uh, in the first case, you, you see that um, Johnny Pujol is the CEO of uh, Simple Lab. Uh, this would be hard um, to match by a rule because um, it says uh, Johnny Pujol, the company is CEO. Um, it's hard for the rule to know that the company being referred to as Simple Lab uh, but this task is very easy for an AI. Uh, likewise, in, in the, uh, the, the second example, uh, the company being matched is overstock.com. Uh, the rule would, would likely have um, be confused about whether overstock.com is a website or a company, um, but uh, the AI has no trouble telling the difference. So I'm going to show you um, an actual uh, real life example of the project that we did. Um, and the polyanalyst platform. Um, uh, okay, just a second, got to reload everything. It should not take um, more than a moment. Uh, so this, um, this platform is called polyanalyst. Should have configured the server setting not to, uh, to time out. Here we go. Uh, the platform is called uh, Polyanalyst. Um, it provides a variety of modules for um, text analytics, as well as um, broader analysis of structured data. And uh, this is the environment in which we performed our three-way head-to-head uh, between the um, AI um, rules-based and hybrid methods. Um, so let's take a look at the uh, rules-based method that we mentioned earlier. If we go into the properties, um, we can see the, the rule um, that we used to, um, that, that we wrote, um, which performs the extraction. Uh, in all, it's, uh, it's 39 lines. And um, let's see the results of the rule. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, operating as intended uh, with highlighting, um, easy verification. Uh, but um, the downside is we see that it has um, lower accuracy than our, our hybrid method. Um, 
On the other hand, um, here is the, the AI-based method. We just use a little module that uh, calls a GPT. Um, you can actually make it access a variety of language models, um, including open source language models, uh, which can uh, stop data from leaving your site, um, or alternatively, it can be configured to um, access a, a private um, Azure instance um, if, if your corporation has one uh, set up. Uh, through the API. In this case, we just accessed uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. And uh, this is the, the prompt that we supplied to the model. Um, at the end, it's going to concatenate the, the record of interest, um, which in this case is a news article. And um, as we can see, the results um, that we found um, verified by GPT-4 were um, not, uh, not very good. Uh, so here's the hybrid method. Let's dig into uh, the details of how it works and uh, why it is better. So first we apply a rules-based filter to get out rid of that um, irrelevant context, which we identified as increasing our query costs and uh, also um, contributing to the hallucination problem. Uh, this is the, the rule. Uh, I wrote it myself. Um, didn't it take me months of training to learn how to do this? Um, so um, we saved some, some time on, uh, on that. Uh, here's the, the result. The, as you can see, it's matched um, a paragraph which mentions uh, CNBC's, um, which, which mentions a CEO, um, CEO Nikesh Ara. It doesn't say who, um, who it is that what company is the CEO of, but uh, we're fine. Um, so here's uh, another paragraph that was matched, uh, mentioning the CEO. And uh, here is a, a paragraph that mentions the CEO. And uh, you might note that it doesn't say the CEO's name. Um, that's uh, perfectly fine uh, because, um, as we mentioned earlier, um, there will later on be a rules-based verification step, uh, which is going to, um, to check um, uh, that the extracted CEO um, actually exists in the text. Um, so if it tries to say that um, uh, so-and-so is the CEO of Microsoft, um, we're going to catch that as a hallucination. All right, next step is uh, standard GPT analysis. And this is the same node that we used for the pure AI-based approach. Um, now, because the language model responds um, with unstructured text, it gives an answer that looks a little bit like this. Um, we tell it um, in the prompt that we want it to answer in a certain form, and uh, we can structure the result um, using a regex. Uh, this environment um, takes the, the time um, from writing a regex down substantially. Um, executing a regex in Python can easily be you know, 20 or 30 lines of code, but here you, you really only have to specify um, the expression self, and we also have a, a shell for testing. And uh, finally, the, the most uh, exciting part, uh, the rules-based verification. Uh, this is uh, the part that takes care of the hallucinations and adds explainability to the text uh, through highlighting it's a two-in-one uh, process. So this uh, very simple rule, um, it uh, serves the two purposes. Uh, all it does is it, it reads the, it makes the machine read the underlying text to check if the um, extracted, if CEO and company are actually present in the text. Um, if they are present, it adds highlighting. And if they are not present, uh, it applies a, um, a filter. Um, the rules-based verification fails. Um, which um, causes it to be thrown in, in the garbage bin um, as a, a hallucination. Uh, here's the, uh, the results um, with uh, explainable highlighting, uh, even though uh, the extraction was uh, first performed by a, uh, an artificial intelligence um, before it was you know, checked by a rule. All right, and the, the final result, um, it uh, looks like this. That we have um, some structured data. Um, we've got the, the text record over here. 
um, the match paragraph over here and a little tag that tells you um, uh, the CEO and the, the company uh, that were identified uh, in the underlying article. Uh, with, uh, in this case, 97% uh, precision, uh, which is uh, really incredible. Uh, I hope that this is uh, straightforward enough. And uh, now let's uh, return to the presentation and uh, wrap up. Um, we'll give you some time to ask questions uh, in a moment. Uh, so um, to, to wrap up uh, with a summary, um, our hybrid method for um, fact extraction uh, combined rules and AI to uh, get a, a better result than either alone. Uh, we got a 97% uh, precision, uh, which is um, twice as high as the, the generative AI supplied. And uh, we also got a recall that was 33% uh, higher um, relative um, or, or in absolute terms uh, than the, the rules alone. Um, so uh, just more accuracy than any of the existing approaches. Uh, we avoided complexity with uh, rules that were 96% shorter uh, than the pure rules-based approach. Um, which makes the, the rules uh, very simple to write for a lay person. And um, as an added bonus, uh, we increase scalability by uh, reducing query costs um, by, in this case, 150 times uh, as a result of filtering out irrelevant context. So um, we've, in conclusion, we've demonstrated um, uh, one novel method uh, for combining rules and AI uh, to, to find a, a synergy and uh, that, that produce better results uh, than we could get from either of the existing approaches. Uh, we think that, that this is just the beginning. Um, in fact, we're actively developing uh, multiple uh, solutions uh, that find synergies between generative AI and uh, other older approaches um, and, and to, to produce um, the, the best possible results. Um, we're working on a, a document review system that analyzes companies' internal documents um, to extract and analyze um, features that they care about, uh, policy compliance, um, relevant entities, uh, et cetera. Um, we're developing a solution for detecting adverse events. Um, essentially, it's just an application of the hybrid AI um, uh, method that I showed you um, right here to the, the medical domain. Um, uh, but we have an additional step um, afterwards um, for uh, resolving the extracted entities to um, preferred terms using an ontology. Uh, and uh, additionally, we're, we're developing um, uh, customized uh, generative AI powered business solutions, uh, which also leverage uh, the, the best uh, methods uh, of, of history inst instead of relying entirely on generative AI. Um, here is a little preview of our um, document review system. Um, as you can see, it's um, read a document. Uh, in this case, it's um, looking for um, potentially offensive material, um, which might not look good um, if the company published it. Um, it, it classifies the um, offensiveness and uh, political non-neutrality and uh, provides uh, suggestions uh, for how the, the document might be reviewed uh, to be more neutral and uh, politically correct. Uh, here's a little preview of the adverse event detection. Um, as you can see, it's um, uh, reading the, um, uh, the, the anonymized or, or um, mock-up patient record, and uh, it's able to detect um, adverse events uh, using uh, an artificial intelligence and uh, verify those uh, using the, the rules-based technique. And then uh, finally, there's a, a third step, uh, which is mapping the extracted events uh, to preferred and standardized terms. Um, in this case, um, the actual medical definitions, uh, hypersensitivity, such as hypersensitivity, conjunctivitis, uh, influenza, and uh, malaise. Uh, all right, um, so I, I hope that that was uh, clear enough. I uh, would like to add uh, that uh, we are planning to uh, demonstrate uh, the ways how we use uh, the same synergies uh, between generative AI and uh, using a universal 
platform for data analytics uh, to build uh, multi-step analysis scenarios, uh, including generative AI and uh, linguistic uh, resources, NLP resources uh, like linguistic rules, uh, ontologies, and NDP resolution and more to build practical business applications. So we are going to run a webinar on uh, uh, the operation of the system for uh, adverse event detection and for document review process. So thank you very much for attending and uh, we'll see you at the next webinar. Take care guys. Uh, thank you very much.